Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's concentrate a little more on the spiral galaxies in the universe. There's three types of galaxies. We have spiral galaxies, we have elliptical galaxies, and we have irregular galaxies. But the spiral galaxies are the most beautiful and also are the most interesting to look at and to observe. They have beautiful structures. Of course, it depends what they look like. Some you can uh, look at straight down from the top so you can see the beautiful uh, structure of the spiral arms. Sometimes you see them at an angle so we kind of have a look at it like this and sometimes you see it edge on so we see the central bulge hidden by the big dust lanes that go right through the middle of the galaxy and of course the middle of the galaxy is where the galactic plane is. So what is unique about these kinds of spiral galaxies? Well for one they're the most observed galaxies because um, I guess I should have an S there, there we go. The reason why they're the most observed is because they tend to be bigger. Spiral galaxies by their nature are big galaxies so when they're far away we can see them. Most of the elliptical galaxies tend to be small and they're much harder to see and they're, they don't, they're not as luminous and of course the irregular galaxies are smaller as well. So the true percentage of galaxies in the universe being uh, the spiral galaxies, well, we think it's about 25%. So we estimate that about 25% of all galaxies are spiral galaxies, but by observation, since they're bigger and easier to find and see, we see that 72% of all observed galaxies are indeed the spiral galaxies. Now, in our own local group, because we live in a group of galaxies, we know that galaxies group together in, in clusters, smaller clusters, medium clusters, and even superclusters. Well, the group of galaxies that we live in consists of about 50 galaxies, all within about a 10 million light year diameter region. And within that region of the 50 galaxies, only three of them are spiral galaxies. Our Milky Way galaxy, we have the Andromeda galaxy, and galaxy in Triangulum, M33. And of the three galaxies, the Milky Way is about medium in size, the Andromeda galaxy is the largest, and M33 is the smallest of the three galaxies, but that one is still 50,000 light years across. Our Milky Way, Milky Way galaxy is almost 100,000 light years across, and the Andromeda is a little over 120 or so thousand light years across. So these are huge galaxies. Our Milky Way galaxy is estimated to have about a quarter of a trillion stars, about 250 billion stars making up our galaxy. So typically they're in the, in the order of 100, 200, 300 billion stars belonging to one of these elliptical galaxies. Notice that the structure is such that at the center we have what we call the central bulge and so that is a little bit more like a football shape or rugby shape ball and then around it is a very, very thin region a kind of a, a disk region where the spiral arms exist. Now there's a distinct difference between the central region and the galactic arms. The difference is that the central region, we call that the central bulge, we'll find much more of the older stars and typically K and M type stars and we call them population two stars. These are older and contain very little metal and the color of these stars tends to be yellow, orange, reddish so you see that the central bulge of, of the galaxies tend to have that reddish glow to them because of the older stars. Now the spiral arms have different types of stars. They're made up of mostly younger stars so there's still much more star formation happening in the spiral arms and because of that the younger stars that are very big, that O and B type stars which are blue and white in color give it that bluish touch, that bluish uh, a color in the spiral arms. This one you can really see how much blue you can see there because the enormous amount of large blue stars that have recently been formed. Again, blue stars don't last very long, maybe 50 million years or so, so if you see a lot of blue stars you know that there's still a lot of star formation. The central bulge region has very little star formation of any. The spiral arms is where all the action still takes place, so we find a lot of population one stars just like our Sun and population one stars contain a lot of the heavy elements, well a lot, um, upwards of 1% of the total star mass may be the heavy elements. What's also interesting is that we have of course the different kind of stars where we have the spiral arms very 
tightly woven around the central bulge. As B stars, the, the spire arms go out a little bit further. And as C stars like this, the, the spire arms go out quite a bit. So they're much more loosely connected from the central bulge. And notice that the percent of the spiral arms mass that contains dust and gas goes from 4% for SA type galaxies to as much as 25% of the SC type galaxies, which is kind of interesting. So the galaxies where the spiral arms still go way out away from the bulge, those still contain an enormous amount of gas and dust, which could eventually be turned into new stars again. So that those types of galaxies would have a lot of star formation still going on. What's interesting about the spiral arms is that no one really knows how they're formed. Uh, we have all kinds of theories. And the latest theories that have gone, that are that, uh, being considered as the most likely candidate for what's really going on there in the spiral arms is that the stars themselves in the spiral arms aren't connected into structures that move together. Like a spiral arm doesn't move as a single entity. It turns out that the motion of all the stars and spiral arms are relatively independent of the spiral arm arms themselves. And so some of the faster moving stars actually move from one spiral arm to the next one. And some of the slower ones kind of hold up the ones that try to move faster. And so what happens is that in the region around the central bulge, you'll have spaces where there's a bunching up of stars that appear to look like a spire arm, but if you were to come back maybe 100 million or 200 million years from now, that spire arm may no, no longer look like a spire arm because the faster stars have moved and it's become a lot less dense in that region. So it turns out that with all the stars moving in various directions at various speeds, you'll have temporarily regions of high density of stars and temporarily regions of low density stars that give you that feel, that look of spiral arms. But it's not the spiral arm that moves in unison of all the stars together. And so that is simply what's kind of the, the, new, the new thought about how spiral arms are formed. It's kind of like cars on the freeway. Whenever there's a slowdown somewhere, then all the cars back up and you have this region of dense cars all close together. And then as soon as the traffic starts moving again, the cars move further apart. And so that's kind of the principle that, hap that is taking place in the spiral arms around galaxies. So spiral arms, of course, make the galaxy very pretty to look at, very unique. And we have all kinds of different shapes. Um, I think the Whirlpool Galaxy is my personal favorite. That's M51, which has beautiful structure and beautiful colors in it. And so, yeah, I do enjoy looking at pictures of spiral galaxies. They're absolutely amazing to look at. And those are still the reasons where a lot of stuff is happening in the spiral arms, a lot of new star formation, all kinds of nebulas that are still being produced by stellar explosions, by stars that are dying. The, when we have the uh, planetary nebulas forming, and of course that debris of dying stars then gets used up in new, in, uh, new formation of stars and the process keeps going. Not so much at the central bulge, but very much so still in the spiral arms. And so that gives you a pretty good feel for um, spiral galaxies. One more thing is that spiral galaxies tend to rotate a lot faster than the elliptical galaxies or irregular galaxies. Irregular galaxies, there's not a lot of rotational motion. And even with elliptical galaxies, the rotation either is non-existent or very, very slow. With spiral galaxies, the rotation is quite fast. And what we found was that larger galaxies tend to rotate faster. So as the size increases, the rotational speed increases. The size decreases, the rotational speed decreases. And there's a fairly good correlation between those two in such a way that we can actually kind of have a feel for the size of a galaxy by simply looking at the rotational speed. And trying to measure distance of those galaxies Using that technique is called the Thule-Fisher technique, and so that is simply a result of realizing that there's this correlation, not quite linear, but a good enough correlation between size of spiral galaxies and their rotational speed. That is also probably part of the reason why spiral galaxies have those arms, because of the rotational speed allows the stars to move at various velocities, kind of uh, attract uh, one another gravitationally, there's a lot of motion, a lot of pulling in those regions, and that's why that chaotic look in the spiral arms is still there. Um, it turns out that over time, spiral galaxies tend to a certain type of spiral galaxy. We'll get into that in the next video. But what is not the case is that spiral galaxies do not necessarily become elliptical galaxies, nor do elliptical galaxies become spiral galaxies. There's no evolutionary process 
for a galaxy of one type to become a galaxy of the other type. So one's a spiral galaxy, always a spiral galaxy. One's an elliptical galaxy, always an elliptical galaxy. So that's the short overview of spiral galaxies in our universe.